Okay, this is our feed water tank. This is the sample cooler that I built, and I just installed this valve, one of those unions, basically spliced off the soft water line to fill this tank up when the water evaporates. And what I found, or what I did, what happened when I was installing this is uh, this weld repair had broke. Somebody had tried to weld this strainer in the past. This is cast iron, so I probably put too much force on it, just side loading it, or I threaded this uh, three quarter inch pipe in here a little bit too far and split that apart. Uh, what's strange is we had two strainer housings uh, in cold storage. I don't know why somebody tried to repair that one. Maybe they tried to do it while it was still installed on the float switch, but I'm gonna get this cleaned up and quick swap these housings out. All right, so I just used some of these wire brushes to clean out some of the iron deposits of this thing. So you can see quite a bit came out. And I'll use uh, my little Milwaukee die grinder. I'm not gonna take the, use the flap disc. I'll use a scotch brake disc for cleaning up the gasket surface. And I just bought this. This is a Titan from Northern Tool carbide scraper. It's just got a piece of tungsten carbide welded or actually uh, brazed onto the end of it so it stays sharp for a long time so that should make scraping off this gasket pretty easy good thinking anyway. oh yeah that works good i'm not going to bore you with all this i'm just going to get this cleaned up pretty good and then uh continue on from there so that carbide scraper worked actually really well and i did touch it up with the grinder the die grinder with the scotch bright pad just a blue one real soft so I don't know if uh, you guys can pick that up, but there's a little bit of pitting on this gasket surface, but not enough to make it leak, I would think. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this guy on. So I just installed all of this about 15 minutes ago, but I gotta take it apart in order to get at this uh, screener or strainer housing. Not a huge deal though this coil out and maybe just roll this out of the way of course I just filled this tank up it's like perfect timing full of water that's right it looks like I need to change the water in this anyways get this spun out of the way a little bit okay now I think what I'll do is I'll break this union and the one right above it yeah, I guess first, more importantly, I should probably turn the water off. Uh, okay, so this is the valve that feeds the tank. Here's a bypass valve in case the tank gets slow. I can just open this up and start filling the tank manually. And then I'll walk over to the boiler here and flip it off. And then I'll walk into the electrical room this is the feed water pump that pumps water from this tank into the boiler. I'll get in the electrical room here and let's see, boiler feed water pump. Yep, I'm just gonna stand to the side here and turn my head away. Just in case, so you know what I'm saying. All right, so now we shouldn't be draining this tank at all. We shouldn't be filling this tank at all. So next thing I'd have to do is actually drain this tank. I just put this new sight glass on. The water level is about here, which is about, about right here on this float switch. Uh, so what I'll have to do is get a bucket under here. This is just the uh, bottom of the tank line, a strainer. And then I've got this valve with a garden hose. Actually, that's what I'll do. I'll put a garden hose on here and run it into the trough. I just need to drain enough water out to get below. Let's see, I just need to drain just past here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, I've got this garden hose hooked up, run it into this sump pump trough, and I'll actually unplug the sump pump because I believe yeah, we're sitting at well over 150 degrees, so that's about 160. 
160 degrees inside the tank. In this particular mun uh, municipality, we're not supposed to pump water into the city sewers. That's above 120 degrees. So I'll have to wait for that water to cool down and I should be able to quench it. Yep, got water flowing. That's good. We should be able to see our water level come down. Yeah, you can't see it on the sight glass through the phone, but it's going down pretty quick. And actually, if I open up the drain for my boiler sampler cooler, that should quench it. And then this tank will start draining. I'll start filling it at the same time. I'll turn all these valves off at the same time. Once it gets up to this temperature probe, then I'll be able to determine if I can safely pump this water out to the sewer or not. Let's see, what's the temp come up to? It's still climbing, still climbing. And it's starting to settle. That's about 108 degrees. That's okay to pump. All right, so open this back up, open this, and plug the sump pump in, and then open this up. Okay. Just gotta wait for this to drain down a little bit. That's probably 75 gallons or so. Okay, right, I'm gonna rip these two unions out real quick grab some pipe wrenches and this guy I might even just nope That'll do, donkey. Oh my god, he's two for two. Oh no, I'm wet. That's all right. Okay, okay, okay. That guy, that guy, shimmer. Looks oh, oh. good. Set this guy down and that valve's still off, which is good. And now let's get this pump housing out of here, or a strainer housing. Half pinch. All right. Got uh, Milwaukee ratchet. Oh, that's actually 916 on the top there. I should do those first. Wait, yeah, that's not a 916 socket. Dirt her! Oh, she's tight. Just break it loose with the wrench. Evidently, this valve above here is not in the best of shape. Yeah, should be enough to. Get her loose. Come on. Now, hopefully, this gasket doesn't shred. I'm going to take this apart because I sort of need it. And by sort of, I mean I really need it. And it didn't. That's good. All right, I'm gonna get a bucket under here. Hold on. All right, so I skipped some stuff. Uh, I had to go to the parts store to get some gasket making material to make a new gasket because old ones just fell apart and didn't have one on hand. And I reinstalled the uh, gasket here and the new part. Got to put the screen back in it still and having some fitment issues with the uh, 
screen the house in, so I'm gonna clean that out and then try to get the screen in there. Okay, so this thing's actually gonna come back off because uh, having some fitment issues with the new, with the uh, old screen. And uh, it doesn't wanna fit in there, so I'm gonna have to take a look at the inside of this housing. It's just two bolts, so it should be easier to take it off rather than, uh, Oh, oops, wrong way. Should be easier to take it off and just look at the inside rather than try to work through an inspection mirror upside down. And it's just two bolts, so not too bad. the uh, custom gasket didn't turn out too bad and if I look in here yeah it looks like there's some gunk in there I should probably clean out okay got the screen installed it uh, really didn't take much there's just some iron buildup got the gasket Three-eighths bolts. If I'm installing anything with the gasket, I like to have the bolts through the gasket before I put a part on, if that's an option, just so it makes lining things up a little easier. Let's get these threads started. There's one. Other. This little Milwaukee cordless ratchet is super handy. I got it free in a kit with a M12 drill and uh, impact driver maybe four years ago. And uh, I didn't think I was going to use it much. I just sort of bought the kit and the thing came free with the kit. And uh, I use that more than my M12 drill and impact. But I guess that's probably because of impacts and stuff at home. Okay, now I can, uh, where did, there they are. I can put my parts back on. Oh, I should probably get the bottom on. This is uh, just a plug for cleaning out the screen or just really draining water out of it. And there's a little rubber square O-ring right here. Put this guy on real quick. Zip these up. Okay, I'll just a little hand snug action. Doesn't take much. Go. Now, reinstall our takeoff valve. Looks like we still have this valve leak. We might have to spin it around one more time. I'll be back with you. Okay, kind of got that. Uh, Valve to stop leaking. I just spun this whole pipe over once. Get this uh, section back in. I like to install my union so if I'm looking down from the top, they're uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey, just sort of a convenience thing. They're all up the same way, plus we're upside down, upsides, right side. 
Okay, got a phone call from the people. We had the boiler for off long enough that the pressure came down to a level where it'll send an alarm to our monitoring company. I just uh, didn't think this job would take that long, but parts store is running stuff. I should have put the boiler on test. But I didn't, so they called me. No big deal there. I'm just going to get a couple of these fittings back together. Toit. And that's toit. All right, everything's tight. I don't see any leaks. I got the feed water pump back on. Everything's looking pretty good. Yeah, nice and dry. The valve up top here, also not leaking. I will have to replace this nipple here pretty soon. It looks like that might be even galvanized, which I guess on water lines is okay, but we're not supposed to run galvanized pipe on any steam lines because of the dissimilar metals. It'll eventually eat at our boiler fire tubes. All right, so it looks like our feed water pumps just shut off, which means that our boiler has enough water to satisfy the controller. Now, a quick peek in here. Yeah, we're still on standby. So I'm gonna flip the boiler on and we should fire up unless we ran a little low on water when the boiler was off. So let's see here. Okay, yeah, it is taking too long. In that case, uh, walk over here to the manual reset, low water cutoff. And as soon as I reset this, we should hear the blower kick on. There it goes. Should be in a purge cycle. Yeah, the screen's got a weird cycle rate for the camera, but we're on a purge delay. So we're back up and running. Drop down to a lower pressure. That's all good, though. And I still see no leaks. Just to briefly explain how the system works, this is our feed water tank. It's filled by a, uh, two water softeners. Uh, and then we also have two condensate lines that are plumbed into this tank. So when the steam goes out throughout the building, we use the steam for heating or for making pellets or whatever. And then some of the steam cools back down into water. It then goes through a steam trap which separates the water or the condensate from the steam it flows down into a basement into a pump and it collects there inside of the pump housing and then from there once the level in that housing gets up high enough it'll pump that condensate or cool down steam water back up through some piping back into this tank so we're reusing the water and not wasting a whole bunch it would cost a fortune to keep this thing fed with fresh water all the time we're also treating this water with two different chemicals, uh, so it pays to bring these chemicals back through the system a couple of times, and I do monitor that to uh, make sure we're not reusing the water too much or we're not flushing it out of the system too frequently. Those lines run across from the pumps down and into the boiler. There's one side here, there's another fill on the other side, and I alternate these pumps uh, that way they're both getting a workout. We basically have a backup pump at all times. I just heard the uh, main burner kick on. If we look in here, there's our uh, burning manifold doing its job. Uh, diffuser, that's the name for that little fan in there. I'm going to cut the video here before it gets too long. Project done. It took way longer than I thought it should, but... Uh, all done. I'm going to leave all my crap laying out and go home for the day.
Thanks for watching.